Well, on this strange Sunday where it is actually Christmas Eve, but not quite Christmas Eve, I've chosen just to tell the story that uh, Sarah so beautifully uh, told with our kids this morning from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. So listen to God's Word in this familiar story. May you hear it afresh this morning. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. That was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth into Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them, as we just saw. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom God's favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off, and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God God indeed. For the children in the sanctuary or those who like to remember being children, do you remember that feeling, you know, whether you believed in Santa Claus or not, this day, right, the Christmas Eve day, And on a Sunday where you didn't have anything else going on like this, your heart was filled with excitement and anticipation for what would happen on that evening and what would happen on the ensuing morning. It was hard for you to fall asleep. You were probably all jacked up on lots of sugar and cookies. And all you could think about what was going to come in the morning, gifts for you. And you were so excited. And I was thinking about that this week, and as I was writing these words, I was thinking, this is how I feel as an adult, a parent of four adulting children who are arrived and have now arrived here in Pittsburgh to be with my wife and I in Pittsburgh. I couldn't, they couldn't arrive soon enough. They couldn't get here soon enough. They arrived each on different days, and I wanted the oldest, Kira, to arrive sooner than she was able to come because she had to work on that day. But that excitement, that joy, that anticipation, that waiting that fills our bodies, literally we get so excited and we can't even sit still that we're looking forward to something arriving. You know what I'm talking about? And the fact that this Sunday, Christmas Eve morning, falls on Advent perhaps makes that joyful anticipation even more palpable because Christmas is almost here. This joyful, pregnant waiting is the history of God's people. From Abraham to Moses to David to the prophets and then 400 years of silence from God after the last words of the prophet Malachi were written. And then angels appear to ordinary, 
farmers, shepherds in a field, and they're bursting forth in joyous song. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, the Messiah, the Lord, glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those whom God's favor rests. The fulfillment of a long-awaited arrival is upon us. In Advent, we sang these songs, O come, O come, Emmanuel, come thou long-expected Jesus. These songs and the waiting of Advent and the Advent longing that fills us on the inside infuses us with the anticipation of joy. This is what the prophet Isaiah foretold as Kevin read for us this morning. Those who have lived in a land of deep darkness on them, light has shone. You have increased its joys, joy, and they rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. And this is what the angels said to the shepherds. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. Joyful rejoicing is the refrain and the experience that breaks in throughout the Christmas story as we prepare for the birth of Jesus. When the angel Gabriel comes to Zechariah to announce the birth of John the Baptist in the temple, the angel says that his son, John the Baptist, will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. When Mary, when she realizes that she's going to be the mother of Jesus, she declares, as we said last week, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. And when Mary then goes to visit her uh, cousin Elizabeth, she says, as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. Friends, the birth of the Jesus, the Christ, is good news and great joy for all people. I ask you this morning, can you feel and sense this longing and this joy being ready to be birthed in you? Perhaps it's not about uh, remembering the story of Jesus the Christ, but perhaps it's all that happens in this Christmas season the connecting with family, the connecting with friends, the sharing of gifts, and the longing for joy to break forth in your life, in your house, in your neighborhood, and oh so much in our world. Can you feel and sense the deep and hopeful longing of joy, wanting to be born in your life and in the people around you? This joy and the anticipation of it, if we allow it to deepen and grab hold of our lives, which requires some vulnerability, it will dwell and develop in us by practicing grat gratitude and it will birth certain kinds of responses in us, two of which we see in this story today. The first is from the shepherds. The shepherds, after encountering the angels, they go to find Jesus and upon seeing him, they spread the word concerning what has been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. You see, the shepherds allow the goodness of this moment, the goodness of the promise, to stir in them joy. They find that they cannot contain it, and it spills out, and they tell others about the goodness of this moment. The shepherds had in an ordinary moment of just watching some sheep Angels appeared to them, and God's powerful existence shows up to them, and they were deeply aware of the fact that God chose them as the first ones to see the beauty, the glory, the majesty, the humility of God in the flesh. And this to them was overwhelming. It was an honor. It was humbling. And perhaps they spread the word so naturally because they can't simply contain it. They were undone. Perhaps asking these questions, who are we? Simple shepherds, social outcasts, hired hands just out here doing our everyday ordinary jobs, watching over someone else's sheep. Who are we that the Lord, the creator of all, is mindful of us and chooses us to show us God's own self? But they seize the twinkling of this ordinary moment and burst into extraordinary joy, 
filled with good news, telling others, spreading the joy of Christmas. Will you allow the good news of the birth of Jesus to plant and stir joy in your heart this Christmas? Will you allow the good news of great joy spill out in words and actions to the people around you? Will you spread that word? Who is in your sphere of influence? Perhaps someone you might even see today or tomorrow who needs to hear this good news of great joy. Now maybe you're not like the shepherds. Maybe the thought of sharing good news of great joy sounds really actually awful to you and intimidating to you. Perhaps you're more like Mary, who Luke tells us Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. What a beautiful phrase. Mary's joy caused her to deeply contemplate and meditate on all that was happening. She kept the good news and the great joy simply close to her heart, perhaps even holding her newborn son upon her chest. She simply spiritually remembered, recalled, kept, preserved the good news of great joy within her own heart. And I'm curious of the, the language in this text to both treasure and ponder. As if treasuring were not enough, she goes on to continue to ponder. She dwelt with the birth of Jesus, her son, the Messiah. Her actions were perhaps out of exhaustion of just giving birth, but she just wanted to be in the moment, to be with Jesus, to be with Joseph, and take it all in. Words, actions, movement could not capture the depth of her joy. To be with her God, to be with Joseph and her son, to be in that moment and to not move too quickly past it, but allow the joy to soak into her soul. She took a long, loving look at the real, real reality of that moment and made her heart the space of joyful contemplation. Mary treasures and ponders her joy in that moment. She collects it in, if you will. And collecting joy over time, in the words of Brene Brown, fuels for us resilience ensuring we will have enough emotional strength when hard things do happen. This to me reminds me of the quote from the psalm that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we certainly know that Mary and Joseph and Jesus would have great hardship to bear in the coming days. And what about you this Christmas Eve morning? Will you allow the mystery and majesty of the birth of Jesus to be treasured and pondered within you this Christmas? Before you close your eyes tonight, will you take just one moment to treasure up the good news of great joy and ponder it in your heart, recalling the gifts and the graces, the blessings, the peace, the hope, the love, and the deep joy that the arrival of Jesus has brought into your life and the longing that you have for that to be expressed in the world. The Old Testament scholar Walter Brueggemann says that joy is simply when you suddenly discover that God exists in such a powerful way that you almost lose your own self-fascination. Let me read that again. Joy is simply when you suddenly discover that God exists in such a powerful way that you almost lose your own self-fascination. This, in my opinion, is what happened to the shepherds. This is what happened to Mary. They both discovered that God existed in such a powerful way that they lost their own self-fascination. And then they acted. The shepherds went and told others, and Mary simply quieted down, perhaps out of exhaustion, 
and treasured and pondered this deep reality in their hearts. We will close this morning by singing my favorite Christmas hymn, Joy to the World. Listen to just some of these words we will sing in a moment. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let all of us our songs employ. No more let sin and sorrow grow, nor thorns infest the ground. God has come to make their blessings flow as far as the curse is found. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. Friends, on this last Sunday in Advent, on the cusp of Christmas Eve, may we allow this good news that perhaps feels oh so worn and familiar to us. May we allow that good news of great joy to grow in us. And may we take the risk of allowing it to deepen in us, expanding in us, perhaps like Mary, feeling the birthing pains of joy. May that feeling and desire and longing for joy grow in us, expand in us, and become a revolutionary force, sustaining us today, throughout the Christmas season, and forever. For when we let joy in, when we let joy in, it births in us bravery and courage. Choosing to let in joy is indeed a revolutionary act. Amen, and may it be so.